Okay guys, so we're going to focus today on arithmetic and scientific notation in case you don't have it yet. Um, here it is, okay? Uh, there's two areas of focus here. The first area of focus is going to be multiplication and division, and then we'll get into addition and subtraction. So let's take a look at the first example that we have. Here we're multiplying 4.0 times 10 to the fifth uh, times 3.0 times 10 to the fifth. So what we're going to do here is the first step is we're going to take these decimals, Okay, and we're going to multiply them. So 4.0 times 3.0. When you multiply these out, you're going to end up with 12.0. Okay. Next step we're going to do is we're going to take a look at these exponents, and we're going to add them together. So in this case, that gives me 5 plus 5. That gives me a total of 10. Now, once you multiply the decimals and you add the exponents, this is what it looks like. You're going to end up with 12.0 times 10 to the 10, right? Again, this 10 is this 10, and this 12 comes from multiplying the decimals. Now, when you're working in scientific notation, remember the rules of scientific notation says that you cannot have more than one digit to the left of the decimal, and here you can see that this is a double digit number. So because of that, we're gonna adjust the decimal place, okay? And we're gonna move it one more spot over, that way we have only one number to the left of the decimal. When we do that, right, that's going to add another jump to the exponent, right? Because here's what we're saying. You're saying that you, had, you started some number over here and you made a bunch of jumps to get to the decimal point here. That took 10 jumps. So all you're going to do is you're going to take one more jump and you're going to take it to an 11. So when you rewrite this, right, it should be written as 1.20 times 10 to the 11. And there's your answer, right? So again, when you're multiplying, right, what you're doing is you're going to multiply the decimals, okay? And then you're going to add those exponents. If you need to adjust your scientific notation, then you can do that. That won't always be the case. Uh, but if it is the case, you simply have to move the decimal and get it in the proper scientific notation. Let's take a look at another example here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do a division problem now. So it's going to be the same kind of process, okay? What you're going to do is you're going to, in this case, subtract, I'm sorry, you're going to divide the decimals. So I can see here that this is really easy. Six divided by two, that gives me a total of 3.0, right? And then what you're going to do with those exponents is you're going to subtract those exponents. So I'm going to subtract four minus three, that gives me a total of one. So when I write this out in scientific notation, that's going to give me 3.0 times 10 to the 1. Now, in this situation, right, we don't have um, to adjust our decimal place because right now you can see that our decimal is one uh, digit to the left of the decimal and you don't need to move it. So this one is already in its final form. Okay. So when you're multiplying, you multiply the decimal and you add the exponents. When you're dividing, you divide the decimals and you subtract the exponents, okay? All right, let's go ahead and move on to addition and subtraction, okay? Now, here is a little bit different, okay? When you're adding or you're dividing, I mean, when you're adding or subtracting in scientific notation, here's the key. These numbers have to be the same, okay? You can do it one of two ways. All right, you can either move this one to a four or you can move this one to a three. It's whatever is easier for you, okay? The movement is simple. Now look, I'm gonna take this number and I'm gonna put it into standard form so you can see what I'm gonna do, okay? So this four tells me that this decimal came from this direction. So 5.1 and then I'm gonna move it over four times. One, two, three, four and then i'm going to put my zeros there okay so here's what i mean right if i have the number in standard form all right so i'm going to write it again here's my decimal now when i put it back into scientific notation oh sorry guys i screwed up a little bit hang on let's do this one again 
I was looking at this number here instead of this number here. Okay, so if I have 5.1 to the third, here's what it tells me. That means that this decimal started three spaces away here. So I'm going to write it again in standard form. Now, here's what it is, right? If I take this decimal and I bring it back to get this number in scientific notation, I had to do three jumps, okay? So what I'm going to do if I want to get that exponent to a four is I'm going to take an extra jump. So now my number looks like this, 0.51 times 10 to the fourth. Now this number reflects this number. See how the exponents are now the same? Okay. When you have the exponents that are the same, then all you have to do is add them together. So 2.0, remember when you add or you subtract decimals, you have to line up the decimal points. Okay. So then this becomes a one, this becomes a five, this becomes a two, and then your decimal points drop straight down. So the answer would be 2.51 times 10 to the fourth. And there's your answer. Okay, so you literally just have to adjust the decimal point. Once you have the decimal point adjusted, then you can do the addition or the subtraction. Okay, so let's try another one. This time we're going to subtract. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one and I'm going to move it down. Okay, I'm going to move it down to a one. You can do this one to a one or you can do this one to a two. Okay, it doesn't matter. Um, the reason I'm going this way is because the last time we adjusted the the, the other one to get a, a point something. So now I'm going to do it the other way. So here's what it is. Okay. 6.0 times 10 to the 2 means that if I write this in standard form, that means that this 2, this 0 or this decimal, sorry, started off two places away. 1, 2, and that's 600. So here's what I'm saying. 600. I had to move it two places, right? So instead of moving it two places, I'm going to move it just one place. I'm going to move it just one place here. Now, when I write the number like this, now it looks like this, 60.0 times 10 to the 1. Do you see how this one now is the same as this one? The exponents now match. When the exponents match, then you have to do is just line up the decimals. 60.0 minus 1.0. That gives me 59.0, right? And then if I want to write it in scientific notation, I have to include the decimals. I mean the exponents, right? So there's 59.0 times 10 to the 1. Now, remember, when you have scientific notation in its final form, you can only have one decimal to the left of the I mean, one digit to the left of the decimal. So what I'm going to do to adjust this is I'm going to take this decimal point and I'm going to move it over one more time. When I do that, that increases my exponent by one. So my final answer is going to be 5.9 times 10 to the 2. And you can include that zero there if you want. Okay. That's it, guys. So remember when you're multiplying and you're dividing you multiply or divide the decimals and you add or subtract the exponents when you're doing addition or subtraction you're going to adjust the demo the decimal to get the exponents to match once the exponents match you line up your decimals and you do the simple arithmetic of adding or subtracting okay Remember, if you have to adjust your scientific notation, do that, but you make sure that you also adjust your exponent, okay? Let me know if you guys have any questions. That's it.